Hello everyone and welcome back to my F122 Custom Formula 2 season for round number 11 in Mexico City. After the events of the previous round we really need to come back strong here and maximize everything that we can uh, because our championship lead is just two points over Oscar Piastri with Jane Derubler coming on strong towards the end of the season in third. He's not quite in direct contention at the moment, but we will need to be wary of him just in case he starts to sneak his way into the fight. Uh, but in terms of the team's championship, uh, we've drew, uh, lost the lead there, dropped into second position, seven points behind Kramer. So myself and Sato will both need to pick up our game here and uh, make sure we do a good job. So across the line to finish off our qualifying lap and we go fastest and uh, we'll potentially get our millionth pole of the season, it feels like. So qualifying is complete and we're all set for an exciting race tomorrow. Your top three are Fiscal, Porcher and Felipe Drogovic. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Alrighty, it's another pole position for us and four bonus points, but Piastri is down in 16th position. How has that happened? He's been so good this season, but something's gone wrong for him in qualifying. He either got held up on his fastest lap or some other issue, but whatever happened, he's down in 16th. We take the championship lead with the bonus points for pole and close the gap in the team's championship as well. Marino Sato just misses out on reverse grid pole by one position. His old teammate from Trident, Marino Sani, uh, will take reverse grid pole, but uh, what on earth? That is uh, very unfortunate for Piastri. Welcome. It's time to head back to Mexico at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez for today's big race. The teams are all lined up on the grid and we're just about ready to join them for what will no doubt be a memorable race. Due to the wet weather conditions, our drivers are in for a rough time navigating the 17 corners that make up the absolutely breathtaking Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez. The circuit offers plenty of opportunities to overtake, especially going into turns one and four, but with conditions not looking particularly great, attempting to do so may be too risky for most. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing will be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. That can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. Alrighty then, here we are on the grid for the sprint race here in Mexico and it's raining again this is unfortunate uh, the rain is what cost us uh, back in Japan and it may do so again here I'm not too optimistic to be honest but we'll see how it goes we'll give it our best shot and uh, hopefully we'll be able to come away with a few points we're starting down in 10th position right in the middle of the pack amongst all the spray so it's not going to be easy, that is for certain. But anyway, we line it up on the grid then, and uh, we'll take our place 10th on the grid. We've got, uh, you know, so many cars in front of us. Superb parking there, mate. Let's make sure we get the edge on the surrounding drivers as the lights go out. That will be uh, kicking up all of the water spray, so the run to turn one will be difficult. Lights out, and away we go for the sprint race here in Mexico. And it's a decent enough start, but now the spray kicks in and it's impossible to see anything in front of us. It's, it's just going to be guesswork where we hit the brakes down into the first corner. Hopefully we can survive with our front wing still attached. We go for a dive actually, make up a couple of spots into the first corner and uh, we've actually gained quite a few positions. The best way to get some uh, clear vision is to make our way to the front. Off the road there briefly though. And that's cost us a lot of momentum on the exit. And now we're dropping back down the order. And uh, we're still going to slot in uh, to fifth position. So uh, that's my alarm going off. Uh, we're still in a decent place. We can't quite uh, do anything here. Now we're getting shuffled back down the order further. As uh, we're just you know, wrong place, wrong time there. Not really anywhere we could have gone. And now we've uh, been shuffled back to seventh. So still uh, three spots gained from the start. 
so not a bad uh, opening sector at all. Let's uh, try and maintain control Radar of this thing. This heavy rain will be with us for a while now. And uh, yeah, heavy rain are not uh, going anywhere, so it's going to be tricky to manage this one, but we'll do our best as uh, we make our way through the middle sector now. And uh, as the cars spread out, visibility will get slightly better, but having a lot of trouble with the traction there. And uh, no tire concerns at the moment, just focus on the driving. It uh, doesn't seem like we have uh, quite the pace to run with everyone else. We're just, just being overtaken again. And uh, yeah, this is uh, not uh, starting to look so good as uh, we thankfully don't have any damage to the car. We did have a few knocks on the first lap. Uh, with some other cars we make an absolute mess of the stadium section and lose another couple of spots through here so yeah we're really uh basically back where we started into ninth position so uh now nah, we're gonna lose more here along the straight we've got marino sato sitting in the slipstream as uh okay focus we need to stay on uh, richard for has made his way past and there goes sato as well and i think we might just let sato go as uh, he's Got a uh, much better pace in these conditions. We'll try and slide ourselves behind him and uh, just try and get up to speed, basically. And uh, th th the problem is, um, if the track was clear, I had no cars around, I would have a chance of actually getting up to speed, but I'm constantly having to dodge around other cars, trying to defend and attack uh, all the time. And uh, it's very difficult to find a rhythm when you're doing that. So it's... Uh, you know, it's going to take a while, I think, to settle into a rhythm if we're constantly under fire, but we'll see how it goes. We're struggling to get to the apex of the hairpin there, and uh, it's just a, a never-ending theme at this point. But uh, anyway, we continue to push on, and we lose another place. This time, it's the ART going past of Teo Porcher, and we've got another ART behind us as well. Christian Lungard going for the move as Joe Guan Yu is behind us as well. They're all fighting away, but uh, it's Lungard who tries to make the move down the inside. Now there goes Joe Lungard taking the fight to his teammates. We make contact with Joe, and that sends us off the road. Just slight, uh, of slight bump there, but it's enough to upset the front of the car. And that tumbles us down the order into last position. Tire condition still looking good. No damage to the car, thankfully, but... There goes all any track position we had left in this race. So, uh, if there's one positive, it is that we can now get into a rhythm of our own accord and uh, try and get up to speed. Ridge of Ashore retires from the race with a mechanical failure. Unfortunate for the Dutchman, he will not make it to the end of this one. He pulls off to the right, and uh, it is day done for the MP Motorsports driver there as uh, we continue. Uh, to push on, you can see absolute daylight in front of us now. We just we just don't have the pace. It's that simple. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, I just can't get it. That said, we do actually have a purple middle sector on this lap, and we actually set the fastest lap of the race. That's Zendeli ahead of you. Our gap to the car in front is 4.8 seconds. They're on a fresh set of wets. Their tyres are eight laps old. We think they've got one more stop. Time last lap was a 1 minute 42.8. Good job, you're gaining by a full second a lap at the moment. It looks like uh, at least then Delhi is on a one stop. I assume that means uh, most of the others are on a one stop. We could potentially try to make it to the end of, end of the race with a no stop. That could be how we uh, find our way back up the order. But anyway, everyone else that comes into the pit lane uh, on that lap and as we just saw, we just set the fastest lap, so our tyres are clearly fine. So I think I'm going to keep pushing on, and uh, we'll see uh, what we can do. We take uh, 11th position as uh, the first half of the field make their stops, and as the second half of the field make their stops, we move ourselves up uh, all the way into, eventually, the race lead. So we do have at least track position on our side now, so we'll see what we can do with it. Uh, at the moment, we are on older tyres, but you know they seem to be working for us. As we continue to push on, though, we're now on to lap 12, so not even at the halfway point of the race, and we're starting to struggle, unfortunately. And uh, we've got Enzo Fittipaldi uh, starting to put the pressure on a little bit deep there into the final corner, and Enzo Fittipaldi is 
Going to be looking for the move and he gets through very easily there down the inside. No need to worry about the tire condition for now. Everything's looking We did get very close to that outside wall, but thankfully okay, no damage. Open, so let's box this lap. Box this lap. A pit window now open, but I'm gonna keep pushing on. We'll see if we can hold on to any track position. If we pit, we're not going to be anywhere near anyone in this race, so we might as well keep pushing until we drop out of the top 10 uh, and at that point we uh, yeah, may try to make a pit stop it'll probably be too late to really do anything but I, I think continuing to push on uh, is the best strategy for us uh, at this point in the race because uh, you know on corrected order we're last by a long way so we're just, we're just going to try and keep pushing on as we are really struggling with that final corner and that's probably what's costing us most of the time throughout the rest of the lap uh, we're not too bad but you, you can see how much momentum we lost there with that moment through the final corner and uh, you know, now we're just tumbling down the order all the way and uh, we're off the podium so yeah we just have to try and manage that issue basically and try and minimize the time loss there as we're fighting our way through the first few corners uh, with Felipe Drogovic We'll hold him off for the time being, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I think only a matter okay, of time P5, P5. before uh, Felipe gets past us, and uh, indeed he does on the way towards the stadium section. We'll go back up the inside though, we're quite good through here I think, so we can keep the fight going through this part of the circuit, and we will actually re-overtake Felipe Dragovic. So yeah, there, there's parts of the circuit where we are quite strong and other parts where we just don't have the pace so yeah this this final corner is really the killer for us I think you can see we were considering going into the pit lane there but I thought no we'll just continue to push on we may still be able to get a point even if it's just one point it's more than we're going to get if we make a pit stop so even though we've got older tyres that clearly uh, are just not working versus everyone else's we just need to keep going because we don't have any other options so we've got a wall of cars behind us trying to make the move we give them a pile of space on the inside get a little bit of a moment on the exit there but uh, we will maintain the position just about as we have a moment on the exit as well it's just one continuous whole moment this race where always on the slide as Yuri Vips was the one to give us a hit there into the first corner he'll be uh, battling to get away with that in terms of damage but we'll see how that goes uh, for the Estonian okay, so Zero Continue to push on through the race and it's Vips down the inside once again this time he may get clear well before the corner we're drag racing him towards a turn one and he's just nosing ahead we'll go back around the outside and we'll see if we can get through I think we'll be able to hold on to the position just about and uh, we will and now a bit wide on the exit we'll get away with it though and we'll manage to hold on to our fifth position for a little bit longer but I, I feel like the clock is ticking. I feel like we're running out of time. Okay, Samaya has just set the fastest lap of the race so far. Well, that's not something you hear every day. Another bad run through the final corner, though, and we lose the position this time. It is Marcus Armstrong getting through. We'll sit in the slipstream of Marcus Armstrong, and we'll see if we can get back through Armstrong, defending all the way to the inside. We'll try and get back to the outside. Marcus Armstrong right uh, in the way for us there, and we try to cut to the inside. We can get a nice uh, switch back. Doesn't work for us though. We just couldn't get the car turned, and now we got Yuri Vips okay, bumping his way through, and uh, he makes that move. So yeah, we're really struggling deep again into the uh, into turn four, and now contact there with Felipe Dragovic. Well, that was very close to contact. I think we just about got away with it as we go for a dive up the inside. And Dragovic carrying the momentum around the outside is able to hold on as Marino Sato is now behind us. We'll try and look up the inside. No move to be made on Dragovic there. And we'll stay behind for a bit longer. Another moment there. We managed to save it, but the field goes by. And we've been uh, dropped into 12th position now. And there goes any chance we had of points in uh, that one slide. Or, or a combination of all of them, really. I don't think this was inevitable, uh, I think is uh, the fair way to say uh, we're, we've been struggling so much, we we're trying to make something work that may have never been possible and uh, now it's time to uh, bring it into the pit lane and, uh, and 
yeah, just get rid of these tyres. They're not working for us. We're continuing to lose more positions. So if we can get over to the pit lane, that would be fantastic. And uh, yeah, we're going to make a stop. If there is a late safety car, that is uh, really the only hope for us. That's what I'm banking on. If we have a late safety car, that will be very beneficial. Christian Lungard retires from the race with a mechanical failure. That happened while uh, all that chaos was going on. And uh, we actually have a green pit stop. I pressed the button slightly early. I don't think I've ever done that before. I've always gotten the purples. So, uh, yeah, even my pit stop skills are below average today. So, Up to speed now. Let's get some heat into those tires. yeah, it's just been another troublesome race in the rain. At least we're still running in this one, and we did complete the first lap, unlike in the previous uh, round. But, yeah, it's just... Oh, come on, we're having another moment here. We'll just about keep it off the wall, which is a miracle in and of itself. But, yeah, this just isn't working for us. I don't know what it is, but I just can never be up to never been up to speed in the rain recently right drop your speed our delta is too low and we're going to risk a penalty slow your pace immediately that is a virtual safety car which is going to do absolutely nothing for us because uh david beckman retired from the race with a mechanical failure so we'll gain one position but uh because it's only a virtual safety car okay vsc ending we're going green maintain positive delta until the green flag uh, we won't actually gain any time from that and we're still uh, just as far away from the back of the field so we're still sitting in 19th position with no other cars in sight we just have to trundle along to the finish basically we're on board now with Joe Guan Yu who uh, has a bit of a moment through turns one and two goes for a little 180 there Chinese driver also struggling in these conditions it seems so I'm glad I'm not the only one that does make me feel a little bit a little bit better that uh, there is someone else having a few issues and uh, we've gone board later in lap oh he's done it again joke on you really not having a good time on this lap that one not quite as bad and he manages to uh, keep it going but yeah joke on you really struggling as well meanwhile out in front Enzo Fittipaldi has won the race Enzo Fittipaldi wins a sprint race here in Mexico great job for him but uh, for us it's another disaster class in the rain Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Ah, let's hope the next race is dry. The only saving grace for us is that Piastri, I think, was also out of the points. Brilliant stuff from Charus today. What a superb victory. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? Well, rain can always be counted to add a bit of a chaos into the race, and they really took advantage of that today to secure this win. I mean, conditions like this can always make it a bit of a lottery, but ultimately, they kept the car on the track and they point in the right way. Not everyone can do that. And that's what got them the win today. It's time for those well-deserved celebrations. They may be one of the newer teams to join F2, but the Charus team have shown they're a force to be reckoned with, taking home the victory. Well done to everyone on the team. Well, this might be the most unexpected podium of the season. Enzo Fittipaldi takes race victory. Second place goes the way of Gilherme Samaya and Roy Nassani finishes in third. Fantastic race by all three drivers. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? I think it's going to be Bernd Viscal. He's not always spectacular, but he quietly gets the job done. And that's the case today. After all this drama, you'd be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Davide Valsecchi, are you all right? How am I meant? <laughs> what did I do to be driver of the day? That was by far the worst race of the season that I've actually made it to the finish of. My goodness, that that was awful. Anyway, um, I'll take it, I guess. Yeah, let's have a little run through the results then. 
uh, obviously the podium uh, contained two Brazilians. First and second for Fittipaldi and Samaya, and Roy Nassani third for Israel. And then we'll run through the rest of the top ten. Dan Tictum, uh, Liam, uh, <laughs> Liam Lawson, the other Kiwi, Marcus Armstrong rather, uh, finished uh, in fifth position, followed by Yuri Vips, the other Brazilian of Felipe Dragovic, Marino Sato just squeaking into the points, and uh, Robert Schwartzman and Teo Porcher rounding out the top 10. Uh, the fastest lap going the way of uh, race winner Enzo Fittipaldi. Uh, in terms of the uh, Drivers' Championship, not much changes between myself and Piastri. The gap remains at six points uh, in terms of uh, Marino Sato. Uh, he does gain one point in his uh, little battle uh, with Robert Schwartzman, but he's still behind the Russian driver. He does re-overtake Liam Lawson though who did not score in this one. They are now uh, even on points uh, but uh, I guess uh, Sato is ahead on countback uh, but yeah still uh, eight points behind Robert Schwartzman uh, in the uh, team's championship. Uh, we are uh, still in second position but only two points behind uh, with myself six points ahead of Piastri and uh, yeah Sato eight points behind Schwartzman it is ridiculously close for both championships. So, we need to do better in the next race. I doubt we'll be so lucky in uh, as to have Sato uh, overtaking Schwartzman, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, we need to we need to capitalize because it's going to be dry. So we need to make the most of it. Welcome back to F2. It's clear from the thousands gathered in anticipation that it's officially race day. With preparations finally wrapping up, it's time to head to the track for today's big event. Autodrama Hermanos Rodriguez gets its name from the legendary drivers and brothers Pedro and Ricardo Rodriguez. The circuit is the highest above sea level on the calendar, coming in at just under 2,300 meters. So while the drag will be low around the 17 corners here in Mexico City, cooling could be a problem for cars who spend too much time in the dirty air. Here are the starting positions for today's race. Ben Fiscal starts his race from pole position and starting alongside in P2 is Teo Porcher. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Dragovic, Armstrong, Robert Schwartzman and Tictum, Samaya, Vips, Fittipaldi, Roy Nisani, Sato, Vishore, Christian Lungard, and Joe, Beckman, Piastri, Zendeli, and Jan Deruvula. Boschon, Lawson, Deleda, and Jack Aitken rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's get down to the track. Alrighty, here we are on the grid then for the feature race here in Mexico. It's going to be dry weather throughout. The strategy will be super, so super softs to the softs. It looks like everyone is starting on the super softs. So no variance there. It'll be a straight fight all the way to the end. As we go to the five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go for the feature race here in Mexico. Straight away we move across a little bit to cover the inside. But we've had a decent start. So I think we'll be all right as we head down towards the first corner, alternating slipstream between the two cars behind us, trying to make sure we can stay ahead, but they're both gaining, but the first corner comes up a little too soon for them, and we'll maintain the position a little bit deep for us, but nonetheless, we maintain first place, and that is the most important thing, as we get a bit of a bad exit as we run up towards turn four. I think we'll just about be okay, as uh, we have Teo Portier right on the back of us but uh, we will thankfully be able to hold on and Teo Porcher not able to do anything there so we'll maintain the first position as uh, we around the hairpin for the first time and uh, we're pulling away so things are looking nice for us as uh, we run through the first lap hopefully we can have a nice clean race and get away from the rest of the field behind and uh, yeah just have a nice pleasant boring race that's what we are hoping for. Let's see if uh, that uh, actually happens. But uh, as we continue on, the battling behind us uh, starts, and that is Marcus Armstrong making his way through and getting ahead of Teo Porcher. So Marcus Armstrong demonstrating some very solid pace at this point in the race, 
and the making the moves, he's up into second position. But as we continue on, though, through the race, it's not uh, Armstrong trying to pass us. It is Portier once again, as we have to defend into the first corner. We will maintain the lead, give him a pile of space on the inside there, and uh, we'll maintain first place. But Portier uh, looking strong at the moment, as uh, we've got a whole cluster of cars now. Marcus Armstrong trying to make the move around the outside into turn four, and he's so late on the brakes there and he gets the move done. So Marcus Armstrong takes the lead. We try and take a later apex there, but that doesn't really give us any better of an exit. And uh, they're okay, struggling no now. No issues with tyres no with tires or the car itself. So yeah, I don't really know why we've suddenly uh, started struggling so much, but uh, somehow we've uh, lost a lot of uh, pace in this race after looking good in the opening stages. Armstrong's taken off now as we've been fighting away uh, with uh, Teo Portier. Thankfully no pressure from behind so we can keep this fight going with Portier down the inside into turn four. We'll barge our way back through and uh, maintain second position for a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, that pace we had in the opening sort of two laps of the race has uh, so suddenly evaporated as we've worked our way through. So uh, it's a bit of a case again of where we're constantly under fire. This time it's Dan Tickton trying to make the move as uh, we run uh, down towards the first corner once again caution, caution. and uh, we have to slot in behind uh, Dan Tickton uh, we have uh, a caution so uh, no uh, overtaking for the moment uh, I didn't actually catch exactly what happened but uh, you'll see on the race director in a moment we uh, had to check exactly what it was and uh, it was just a mechanical failure there uh, for David Beckman so uh, yeah, he did not make it to the end of this one, but uh, yeah, nothing too crazy to see there. Uh, but thankfully we were actually able to keep up with Dan Tickton, and now we have a chance to re-overtake the Brit as we head down towards the first corner once again in the slipstream. Dan Tickton throws the block, we'll just go zooming on past before we even get to the first corner, and uh, we'll make the move nice and easy there around the outside of Dan Tickton. And, uh, that's us back up into second position as uh, we make our way through turn three. DRS again for us on the exit as uh, there's no second detection zone there. So uh, that's also very helpful for us. So we continue to push on then a bit deep into turn four and Dan ticked him down the inside. Bit of contact and more contact. And that's damaged our front wing. Felipe Drogovic, uh, the contact with us there as well. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we need to make a pit stop anyway so we can replace that front wing but uh, it's going to cost us time but uh, yeah that was just clumsy i was got desperate tried to get back up the inside of tictum and then the contact with drug which was just a side effect of all that so uh yeah that's unfortunate we're going to be slow for a little while now till we get that front wing changed drug was doing all the right things trying to uh give us as much space as possible to recover from that but uh yeah we just clumsily knocked into him as well as Taya Portier. Uh, made his way through so yeah this is uh, definitely not ideal I, I, I said it before we need to capitalize on this race with Piastri starting down the order but uh, it's not happened and uh, with the front wing damage we're going to be struggling to uh, probably even stay in the points as we uh, get ready to make a pit stop Jeff not uh, not Jeff Mark not responding to us anymore. Jeff's gone. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, th this is uh, this is not an ideal situation. We eventually find our way into the pit lane as uh, we had to avoid a few other cars uh, who were making their way past. Very difficult to get back to the right there when you uh, end up on the wrong side of the road. But uh, the pit crew, they don't have a new front wing ready. They're just going to change the tyres. And we're going to have to complete the rest of this race Perfect with a broken front wing. The there, what are you doing, guys? If the front wing's half missing. This is... We, we can't continue okay, like this. We're going to have to complete complete the, re complete the rest of this race uh, with half a front wing. This just got very, very difficult. I was you know, expecting to have to deal with a time loss of changing the front wing about you know, maybe about 8 seconds. This is probably going to be more than that. What's the what's the situation? Jeff, 
the mark head. Taking ahead. Our gap for the car in front is 18.0 seconds. Yeah, 18 seconds to the car ahead. So, to be fair, as we continue to okay, push on. Okay, you've got front wing damage. This will have a major impact on performance unless you box for a new one. Tire condition still looking good. Okay, so even he's saying we should box for a new front wing, even though they didn't fix it when we did box. But uh, to be fair, we actually aren't that slow. And uh, we were actually gaining time on uh, the cars who hadn't made pit stops yet. So as everyone else makes their stops, we'll see where we re-emerge. But uh, I can't imagine that we'll have the pace once they put fresh tires on. As we get a nice bit of slipstream there and uh, make our way past Teoport Share. And uh, that moved us up into 13th position. And uh, yeah, that's half the field making their uh, pit stops on this lap. We'll have to wait a little bit longer for everyone else to uh, filter through the pit lane and we'll see where our true position is. But uh, I'd say we're around third or fourth place as uh, we come around again. Everyone else makes their stops and now we'll see uh, where we truly sit as uh, they all file through the pit lane. And uh, that's us now up into no third. Of rain for the time being. Conditions look good. And, uh, okay, you've got P3, P3, well done. Yeah, third place. So, uh, oh, that's uh, Joe Guan Yu retiring from the race with a mechanical failure. And uh, he's not had a good weekend here in Mexico. It'll be one uh, to forget for him, unfortunately, for the Chinese driver. Uh, two spins in the previous race and then a uh, mechanical failure in this one. That is a mega dive from Teo Porcher. It doesn't work out for him, though. We get back through. So we go a little bit very wide actually on the exit of turn 3. Portier gets back through and uh, we'll have to sit behind the Frenchman for a while until we can try and maybe make a rear taking move. Can we be very brave on the brakes here? Down the inside into turn 4. We'll get the move done. And uh, well we've made a mess of turn 5 but nonetheless we get through on Teo Portier and move ourselves back up into third position. We are fighting for a podium here as a big slide on the exit. And that's cost us a few spots there, and we're now down and uh, into fifth position. Robert Schwartzman getting through, so that's critical. This is for the constructor, uh, the team's championship uh, once again. So we need to try and stay in touch with Robert Schwartzman. It's going to be difficult, but we've been managing the front wing situation okay so far. And as we continue on, Schwartzman and Porsche are very preoccupied preoccupied with each other so let's see if we can take advantage of this as we run through turn three good exit we get past one we might get past the other as we have to drag race Taylor Portier around the outside towards turn to four, four. and we will make the move around the outside of Taylor Portier and get back through into third position once again and uh, thanks to their fighting it kept us in in uh, DRS range and uh, allowed us to get back through once they held each other up enough through the first three corners. But as we continue on, it may not stay like that. We're looking back, we're not really under threat, they're a bit far back to be doing anything, but they're having a great argument with each other, that's really helping us out. We just got hit! Taylor Portier just made contact with us through turn one, and I don't know what on earth he was doing. he came from a long way back, he was obviously preoccupied with Schwartzman, but he was so late on the brakes and just couldn't get a stop. We even gave them room on the inside just in case they were going to be bold. But that is ridiculous. Teoport Cher carrying way too much speed into the first corner and making contact with us. And uh, now he's got damage to the front wing as we make our way through turn 5. We've been hit by Teoport Cher again. T-bone this time. And now the whole field goes by. We get going again without losing too many positions. Teoport Cher I think will be much worse off uh, for that. His front wing will be absolutely destroyed, but that was a full-on pit maneuver. He even turned back to the left before making contact with us. That was a, absolutely a pit maneuver from Teo Porcher. That was terrible, honestly. What was he doing? We were a little slow heading into that apex to be fair, but... That was... Come on. Seriously? That has absolutely destroyed our car. We've got damage to just about every component of it. We're going to make a pit stop now since Confirmed. we've dropped... We'll receive you at the end of this lap. Uh, well, uh, down the order. And, uh, actually we haven't dropped too far down the order, but we will if, uh, if we don't, uh, make a pit stop because our car is wrecked 
people run older tyres than everyone else. We've got damage components all over the place. So I'm going to try something a little bit different here as we come into the pit lane. We've got nothing to lose, so I'm going to try putting the super soft tyres back on. They should make it to the end. It will be our qualifying tyres, uh, so they have done a flying lap. But uh, the final stint will be roughly the same length as the first. So I think we should be able to make it work, and it should give us some really decent pace, I think. Um, all the way through and uh, of course with the new front wing on the car that will help we uh, but of course the damage components there's no fixing the side pod on the floor mid race so I'm hoping the super soft tyres can counteract that and we can still have some good pace only time will tell we get racing again then here in Mexico we're down at the back of the field we'll see what we can do We'll go for the lunge down the inside and make our first overtake. This was on the restart, so we won't quite know how much pace we got, but we've gotten ahead of Lorimz and Deli, and the car feeling okay through the first few corners. Now down the inside of Boschum. He doesn't give us a lot of room there. We have a bit of a slide, uh, but we get away with it. That could have uh, been a lot worse if we uh, didn't contain that. A little bit like what happened with uh, Joe in uh, the first race at this very corner. But uh, now we'll get around the outside of Washington. We've got a whole cluster of cars here. Four cars all in one area. Five including us. So let's see what we can do as uh, we head up towards Good turn job. four. Nice we'll see if we can make another overtake. We've not got a lot of uh, room here as Felipe Drogovic is very slow. So I don't know if Drogovic has got some damage. It's very possible because he was running higher in the field earlier as uh, we go for the lunge. And now around the outside of Drogovic, he's absolutely blocking us everywhere, is the Brazilian. Now we'll get down the inside into the left hand uh, and force our way through ahead of Felipe Drogovic. We'll move ourselves up another position. We're up into 14th now. And we've got Alessio Deletta in front of us. We'll see if we can get down the inside of the Italian into the stadium section. And that's a nice symbol overtake up into 13th for us. So... It seems like we do have some very good pace on these tyres as we continue to push on. We do continue to make ground. Liam Lawson is up next and we've got the DRS. So does Liam Lawson. We're looking all over the place but we don't have any spare momentum on our side. We're locked for speed with Lawson as we head down towards the first corner. We will make the move though down the inside into turn one and move ourselves ahead of the Kiwi driver and up into 12th place. So Brilliant. Nice move. Keep going. points are uh, almost certainly the on the cards if these tyres last to the end and that's the big if as uh, Marcus Armstrong retires from the race with mechanical failure he was the race leader and he is now out what a shame for Marcus Armstrong that is an absolute disaster for him and the dams team as uh, we continue clear. Green flag. to uh, make our way through the field and that's two places game for us with Armstrong out of the race and getting past Lundgaard there as well. That's moved us up into 10th and into the points. And because we have the fastest lap, that's currently three points for us. So uh, considering how this race could have uh, ended earlier on, that is uh, really great as we try and make our way around the outside of uh, not only Rowan Asani, maybe Robert Schwartzman as well. We're a little bit off circuit there, but we will get ahead of Robert Schwartzman to move ourselves up into 8th position so continuing to find pace and make ground in this one so these super soft tyres not wearing out too much yet so we'll see how long we can use these for hopefully they will maintain a, a decent level of speed until the end of the race uh, I'm hoping and praying they can as we go for the move down the inside and make our way ahead of Jane Derubula and uh, that's another position game for us up into 7th place now so we are really uh, you know, fighting our way back into the points. Next up, uh, we have uh, the uh, MP Motorsport uh, car of Richard Vashore. We'll make our way down the inside, around the outside, and up the inside once again. Right, left, right, through the first three corners, and we make our way ahead of Richard Vashore and up into sixth place. P6, you got P6. Marino, and Sa Marino Sato and Oscar Piastri up ahead. But uh, further up the road, it's Dan Tictum. He's going to take victory in this one as he rounds the final corner. Great drive by Dan Tictum. And uh, he can be very happy uh, with that one. We'll come across the line to finish in sixth place. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. And uh, we could have had more. 
but it's a pretty decent recovery nonetheless. Oscar Piastri gets the driver of the day. He made so many places. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Carlin today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? I think they kept a cool head. That's why they won today. Smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way around. And there you have it, today's winners. Having raised some of the biggest names in F1 to date, Carlin have once again shown their expertise when it comes to recruiting new talent. No doubt today's winners have a bright future ahead of them. They certainly deserve it after today's performance. So it is Dan Tictum who takes feature race victory here in Mexico. Second place it goes to Enzo Fittipaldi, another podium for him this weekend, and also a second podium for Gil Herme Samaya. Brazilians have been flying here in Mexico. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? I think I'm going to give it to Oscar Piastri. He came through the field so well today. Well deserved. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Alrighty then. I don't even know what to say about that race. I've got mixed feelings. It's a decent recovery, but... Um, I feel like it's a recovery we shouldn't have had to make. That collision with poor chair was uh, just weird. Why, why did he turn back to the left when he was alongside us, heading into a right-handed corner? That that was I, I I don't understand that. But regardless, yeah, we managed to come away with P6, just two places behind Piastri, so we'll lose two points to Piastri in the Drivers' Championship uh, in terms of the Tasso, the Sato schwarzman battle uh, he will gain 8 points on Schwartzman, which I think was the gap between them before so uh, Sato and Schwartzman have been very close uh, recently in the Championship and now they can't get closer they're tied on points, Sato ahead on countback so uh, yeah, the, the team's Championship is just as closely fought as the Drivers and uh, it is now just four points between myself and Piastri in the drivers where four points ahead and uh, in the in the team's championship it is much the same four points the gap uh, between us and Prima so uh, yeah we have three rounds now to go it is so so close uh, in terms of the uh, other teams Prima are 56 points behind so again not hugely uh, in contention uh, in terms of other drivers, uh, in the Drivers' Championship, De Ruvel is third, and he sits 51 points adrift as well. So, yeah, not uh, uh, not a major contender, but if he can sneak in a few good results over the next two rounds, he could definitely haul himself into contention. It's certainly not out of the question, but anyway, uh, that is uh, just about it uh, for this one I think uh, we what did we do we we're four points ahead in the championship I think we started uh, I, I've totally forgotten where we started uh, two points ahead so over the weekend we came two points uh, on the Piastri and we, we we retook the lead in the the team's championship thanks to Sato uh, scoring more points than Schwartzman so not a bad weekend but anyway, that is uh, going to do for this one. So I'll say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to give us some feedback in the comments. It is always very helpful. Other than that, I will see you next time. Goodbye.